Coming up on today's episode, Star Wars, we have a blue date, kind of. How to match your speakers so you don't blow up your AV receiver. Part four of Robert's Amazing Calibrate, your AGTV series, Sharpness, ow. And of course, the Blu-ray releases for the week of August 24th, 2010. This is HD Nation. Today's episode is brought to you by the United States Air Force, Netflix. Go to netflix.com slash htnation for your free trial membership and godaddy.com. Welcome to HD Nation. I'm Robert Heron. And I'm Patrick Norton. HD Nation is your guide to the best in HD content and the best in home theater gear, no matter what your budget is. Blu-ray online satellite cable over the air. If it is in HD, we like it. I find your lack of faith disturbing. Actually, that's how Mr. Lucas has announced a release date for Star Wars. Be still my inner child. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think your lack of faith is probably totally justified, though. <laughs> uh, the date, sometime in fall 2011, according to the interview Lucas did with Jon Stewart at Celebration 5. It's a big Star Wars gathering. Mm, the package, which will probably cost a small, small fortune, will include all six live-action films. No! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, episode one is almost as bad as finding out your dad is Darth Vader. Mm -hmm. yes, <laughs> hey, the set will include lots of extras, we're told, along with the special editions. Uh, I know. And only the special editions. Damn. Lucas told the New York Times that restoring the original versions in high enough quality would cost too much. No! Just, how much has he made off this franchise? How much has he made off the toys? Uh, several billion dollars. <laughs> George, <laughs> baby, be driving up to Marin later on today. Bite me. Just saying. Oh, we you have could, to be uh, around. We could. Is there is there a fund we could chip in toward? Actually, I take it back, Mr. Lucas. Don't bite us. Tell us where we can chip in to actually see the classics that you created and actually kind of elevated our whole concept of what science fiction could be. We'd like to see the originals, please. And I the whole Greedo shooting first thing. Ew. <laughs> I spent the part of my weekend, anyway, watching... Uh, Spike TV was doing a marathon of all the Star Wars mm -hmm. movies back to back, or at least the, the originals. Mm -hmm. And I got to compare them to what I remember seeing in the theater. <laughs> and there's a lot going on there, folks. It is, yes, Greedo. The explosion's been modified. The soundtrack has definitely been updated. But seeing seeing Hayden Christensen come out at the end as a ghost of Anakin Skywalker when it used to be the uh, guy who originally played Anakin and I don't know seeing things like that suddenly appear it was a it was disturbing indeed. Speaking of disturbing, <laughs> at Eddie Bishop tweeted, at Patrick Norton and at Robert Heron look like Ooh. sparkly Twilight vamps on the high-def version of the latest HD Nation. Does that mean I'm pretty? You're always pretty. Oh. I, we, we actually had an issue with one of our studio cameras, which we, well, it basically put lots of wee little sparkles on the raw footage, which led to some really uh, interesting compression issues in some of the formats, as many of you emailed us about. Pretty sure we have that fixed, and if we're looking sparkly right now, we didn't. Or we're vampires. We had some random noise in our in our feed. Yes, let's refer to it as random noise. So I'm not pretty. You're pretty. Robert. Okay. You're always pretty. <laughs> and everyone gets to wear white to their wedding. Awesome. Cole Durham is on Blu-ray, by the way. All right. I'm not sure if Fahad is going to back to school in Manchester, but this is a good question for anybody stuffed into a dorm room or a small apartment. Apartment? Apartment. It's like a boat thing. Yeah, it's a British thing. A dinghy. <laughs> a dinghy. If you're living on a dinghy. Anyhow, Fod <laughs> writes in, Hi guys, I'm hoping you can tell me which company has the best computer monitor that can give, quote, superb, unquote, HD 1080p quality pictures. Looking to spend between 150 and 500 pounds. Nice budget, dude. Keep, uh, keep up the show. Thanks, Patrick and Robert. Fahad from Manchester, comma, UK. Hmm. I'm partial to what NEC does as far really? as their, their, their display systems mm -hmm. for PCs and even their medical displays can look really pretty, but they have LED backlighting on these systems now and they've These aren't like the $7,000 seven to $7,000. No, they're, they're cheaper now, okay. but they, they, some of their color quality and their high-end monitors, you can spend upwards of $1,000 though, okay. so it might be probably out of your price range. But if you're looking for absolute picture quality and you, you do a lot of you know color comparison or color right. work. If you're editing, if you're a professional, totally. if you're working I, with effects. I, I would definitely take a look at their products just to see if something there works yeah. for you. Otherwise, I'm still kind of full on about as far as LED backlit LCDs go in terms of color quality. Uh, picture brightness is always going to be fine. 
it's, it's hard to find good black levels on monitors. So if you work in a dark yeah. environment, that's probably the most challenging thing for a new Everything display. Everything's look a little grayer than that. That or it's just the displays are by nature so bright, and it's hard to turn them down and still keep them looking right. <laughs> I've been working a lot in, in the new house at night, and I yeah. have to turn the brightness down to like 20%, or else I can feel my eyeballs tanning. I, I <laughs> love the optical little sensor on my HDTV mm -hmm. that dims my display, for, except for when company comes over and like, oh, i got to boost it up just to make it pop, and everyone go, ooh, but... Otherwise, uh, being able to turn that down to an eye-friendly right. level in a dark room, it, it's a must. Yeah, if, if you're kind of thinking, like, you, you're not going to buy the high-end NEC monitor, which most of you probably aren't, um, you're looking at a 21 to 27-inch 1920 by 1080 monitor in that price range. 27-inch is going to be kind of pushing the high-end on that. Um, those will support Blu-ray at native 1080p. Dell usually has good deals, especially if you can get the Dell outlet in the UK. It's open box, return scratches, stuff like that. They usually offer a pretty good discount. Technically, would you agree with this? Dell's Ultra Sharp are going to offer the best image quality from all of the Dell monitors. I'd be curious to who they, sh they, they used source to go with mostly, from. yeah, they used to mostly source LG panels, and I'm not sure if that's still the case anymore, but I, I hear a lot of people just raving. If you can get a good yeah. deal on a Dell, uh, Dell Ultra Sharp off their off either their business section or their website, right. or or just one of the many good deals they're always throwing out, it, it, it's definitely worth considering. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I have kind of trouble telling the difference between my 21 and a half inch Ultra Sharp and my 20 inch Samsung. Maybe it's because the Samsung is so good, or maybe <laughs> I'm looking at it with the wrong content, but if you're thinking Blu-ray, it is critical that you get a monitor that supports HDCP. That's totally. A, and, and that can be either be through an HDMI port or through a DVI port. Look for entertainment monitors. They usually have something like that for the HDMI port equipped monitors. Um, if you have a DVI port on the back of your monitor, you just need an HDMI to DVI cable to connect that to your Blu-ray player. Unless your PC is your Blu-ray player, in which case DVI to DVI works just fine. Just make sure the monitor is HDCP compliant, which any major brand of monitor should be. Yeah. Nowadays, yes. Exactly. Most <laughs> monitors nowadays do incorporate HDCP, so you can play Blu-ray movies without using any kind of hacks or extra software that you might need. So NEC at the super high-end, uh, Dell, Samsung. I want to say it, Asus, I think, has their 120 hertz display out, too. Oh, really? Which, granted, that's more for 3D, but you can run it in 120 hertz in 2D mode. And a lot of people are telling me just the performance difference between a 60 hertz LCD for PC use versus being able to run it at a full 120 hertz acts uh, smoother window movements and other things, too, that might be of interest to you as well. So. Yeah. I'm tempted. I'm kind of. I'm kind of sitting on my fingers, waiting for one of the uh, 120 hertz displays to come out before I before I drop some coin on my next PC monitor. And before any email, anybody emails in, yes, Apple makes lovely monitors. Of they course. are very expensive, and you need a Display Port to power them. Or unless there's a DVI to a Display Port adapter. Hmm. I haven't seen one. We will go look. Hey, let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, ladies and gentlemen. Let's say hello to the United States Air Force. This is Titan 1 4. No signs of life. Titan 1 4, hold your position. What do you got? Unmanned aircraft is identifying enemy sniper. Copy that. Let's move. Thanks, Reaper 1 1. We got it from here. Sensors coming off target. Learn more at airforce.com. A little movie called Scott Pilgrim vs. The World was released a week or two ago. I haven't seen it yet. The two-year-old, the action flick's not so good. But I gotta say, it sparked massive debates inside our office between actually Roger and Serafina, who apparently disagreed with Ron about the ending. In any case, once we basically cleared up all the mayhem, bandaged up the wounds, and separated those two like a bunch of kindergartners, we decided that was the perfect jumping off point for this week's top five list. Not fighting, uh, and we couldn't really find enough film for the video game theme. Can you believe Tron is not on Blu-ray yet? Or War Games. Or War Games. Oh. Although technically, well, I guess it's kind of like he was looking for video games, even though they're actually Do you want to based. play a game? But they were kind of, yeah. <laughs> In any case, we can bring you the top five Blu-ray movies based on video games that we can actually find on Blu-ray. Number one. Resident Evil, yeah. Originally released as a PlayStation game in 1996, it was later released on the PC, the GameCube, I miss the GameCube, and even the Wii. 
And in 2002, it was brought to the silver screen, directed by Paul Anderson and Starling Mila Hobovich. She plays Alice, who joins with a group of commandos as they try to escape from a secret underground facility that's been overrun by, yes, zombies, paving the way for a whole slew of survival horror video games. This plot translated quite well to film, as far as horror films go, and even spawned three sequels, one of which I've seen at least nine times thanks to Cable. Ah, yeah. Uh, Resident Evil Extinction, was that one of them? I, I, or Apocalypse, I used to use that as a test disc, so I've seen a lot of that movie with people. Anyway, <laughs> next up, Tomb Raider. Continuing the theme of hot ass kicking women, this 2001 film stars Angelina Jolie as Laura Croft, who races across the world, raiding tombs for treasure, trying to keep precious artifacts out of the hands of a secret society called the Illuminati. It also earned a sequel two years later, Laura Croft Tomb Raider, The Cradled Life, it's all based on a 1996 game originally for the Sega Saturn that was later brought to the PC, Mac, and PlayStation. Oh my, Tell me. Speaking of oh my, Mortal Kombat. <laughs> the first arcade game to feature graphic depictions of human dismemberment. Gotta love the ripping the spine oh, out thing. Mortal Kombat fatality. was an instant hit, spawning <laughs> four. Yes, fatality. Um, perfect. Uh, Johnny Cage. You can tell we've played a little bit of that. Four, Package check. Four additional <laughs> arcade sequels and four console-only titles adapted into a feature film. Also, oddly enough, directed by Paul Anderson, a uh, member of the Resident Evil thing. Mortal Kombat follows four warriors, Liu Kang, Johnny Cage, Sonya Blade, and the demigod Raiden as they travel from Earth to Outworld for a Mortal Kombat, a martial arts tournament that will decide the future control of the Earth and the fate of humanity. Featuring the arcade game's signature moves and phrases the movie was well received by audiences and oddly enough critics. The fights are pretty tame by today's standards, but it's still a fun film. It's also one of my favorite movie soundtracks. It's just it's, it's a good <laughs> pump and driving soundtrack game. And it's not yeah, it's good. Go figure. You wanna read this one? Because I can't keep a straight face about a movie that's all about running around like this. Doom, baby! <laughs> the iconic first-person shooter from id software that helped spawn an entire genre of video gaming doom the movie takes place on mars in the year 2046 researchers in a martian lab are attacked by unknown creatures and a team of space marines are sent in to investigate and neutralize the threat space marines are cool space marines are cool man <laughs> starring dwayne johnson aka the rock along with carl urban and rosamund pike doom is a fun mindless romp just don't expect anything beyond a paper thin plot <laughs> game in jokes and workable special effects. Yeah, the movie is much funnier if you've played several thousand hours of Doom in your life. Oh boy. Good games in general. I love them. Woohoo! Max Payne, by the way, it's what you get when you combine pulp noir, fiction, Hong Kong action films, third person shooters, and fins. Winning a BAFTA award for the best PC game in 2001. Wow, that was a long time ago. Ported to the Xbox, the PS2, and the Mac, Max Payne introduced new gameplay elements like a Matrix styled slow motion bullet time. I spent a lot of time in bullet time. Awesome. Max Payne, the movie, was released seven years later, based loosely, very loosely, on the original plot. The movie stars Mark Wahlberg, shooter, as Max Payne as a revenge seeking NYC cop on the trail of his family's killers. Like Doom, Max Payne shows the limits of a video game plot as motion picture narrative, but the digital effects are some of the best for any movie we've seen in a long time, especially the hallucination sequences and the noir style. It's really well done, even if it is undercut by rather unenthusiastic acting. Oh. Well, Max Payne is what you might call a taciturn character. I, I, I think it's one of the better video games I can think right. of as far as games I've actually finished. So. But it ain't Shakespeare when you talk about plot. But I never did see the movie, so <laughs> dang it. Gotta do justice to these things. Hey, and an honorable mention goes out to Prince of Persia, since it won't <laughs> since it won't be out on Blu-ray for another three weeks. This is an old school video game, first released in 1989, and it's gone through over 14 versions across the dozen platforms, or dozens of platforms, including the iPhone and others. The film Prince of Persia Sands of Time starts stars Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh, Prince on a mission to find that ancient dagger before it falls into the wrong hands. And that's all we're going to say about that movie. Really? Other than we have, okay, have that was another it? game I really enjoyed, but... Have you seen that movie? No. no. Yeah. No. I give you 20 bucks to watch that movie, and you know what? You're going to ask me for another 80 to make it an even 100 for your time. It's not even Maybe in my more. Netflix queue. Yeah. Not, not yet. <laughs> Visually stunning, though. <laughs> oh, I might just reload up the video game again and relive some actual fun. Maybe a better use of your time. There you go. Blu-ray releases? Yeah. Hey, it's time for the new Blu-ray releases for the week of August 24th, 2010. First up, Lost, the complete sixth season. It's the final season of the series and it's loaded with extras. More, most importantly, it includes a 15 minute epilogue that explores a bit more about what happens on the island afterwards. You also get bloopers, deleted scenes, behind the scenes, on location from Hawaii, and stories from the cast and crew. Also included is a featurette called, quote, crafting a final season. 
It's an investigation into the goals and expectations of the season through interviews with the writers, producers, cast, and crew. Also released is Lost, the complete collection. You knew this was coming. This insane box set includes all six seasons, all the bonus material that was included in the original releases of those six seasons, as well as additional bonus material, including personal tours of Oahu, where the series was shot. You also get a look at Comic-Con, a closer look at some of the props from the show, including their significance and stories. Uh, a humorous yet emotional look at every character who died on the series and much more. If that wasn't enough, in addition to all the footage, you get a special edition collectible Senate game as seen in season six, a custom Lost Island replica, an exclusive episode guide, a collectible Unk, and a blacklight pen light. Oh, I gotta love that. All for a measly $280. They're going all out, so if you are a Lost fan or no one, this is a must. Next up, Time Bandits. Written and directed by Terry Gilliam in 1981, smack in the middle of the Monty Python era, this film stars John Cleese, Sean Connery, and Shelley Duvall. The plot follows a young boy who joins a bunch of dwarves as they time travel across history, stealing treasures as mapped out by the, quote, supreme being. It's quirky and hilarious, and our producer Roger Chang calls it one of Gilliam's best movies. Also included on the disc is an 18-minute interview with Terry Gilliam. So if you're only familiar with his recent stuff, take a trip back in time and visit the Time Bandits. Other releases include $5 a day, 222, Abandoned, A Johnny, The Backup Plan, Black Label Society, Doom Troop and Live, The European Invasion, City Island, Death Note Collection, Dorian Gray, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood Part 2, BBC's The Great Rift, The Long Good Friday, Machine Gun McCain, 1986's Mona Lisa, The Pixies, Acoustic and Electric Live, Shogun Assassin, The Simpsons, the 13th season, The Square, Survival of the Dead, The History Channel's The Universe, Our Solar System, and With Nail and I. It's time to thank one of our sponsors, Netflix. With more than 15 million members, Netflix is the world's largest subscription service, instantly streaming TV episodes and movies over the internet and sending DVDs by mail. This week, my ever-updating Netflix delivery queue has informed me that the twisted 1974 cult sci-fi movie, A Boy and His Dog, will soon arrive in my mailbox. A young Don, Don Johnson traversing a post-apocalyptic wasteland with his telepathic canine companion, wild and then some. For $8.99 a month, Netflix members can instantly watch unlimited TV episodes and movies streaming to their TVs and computers and can receive unlimited updates delivered quickly to their homes. Blu-ray plans start at just $5.99 a month. With Netflix, there are never any due dates or late fees, and shipping is free. Members can select from a growing library of titles that can be watched instantly and a vast array of titles on DVD. Among the large and expanding number of devices streaming TV episodes and movies from Netflix are Microsoft's Xbox 360, Sony's PlayStation 3 game console, and the Nintendo Wii console. Find movies you love easily. As a new member and an HD Nation viewer, you can get a free trial membership. Go to netflix.com slash hdnation and sign up now. Be sure to use this URL so that they know we sent you. Ladies and gentlemen, part four, possibly the concluding segment in Robert Heron's ultimate DIY self-home calibration ACTV make it better extravaganza. <laughs> Dude, yeah. sharpness. It's all about sharpness. All about sharpness. Yeah. This is on the free disc, the AVS HD disc we've been using. Huh? Not the ideal tool for setting sharpness. What is the ideal tool? No, something like a, a nice gray pattern you'll mm -hmm. find on a lot of the test discs out there that test discs out there that have a what they call like a black crosshatch pattern, uh, kind of a mid-level gray with a nice thin black lines, or usually different different thicknesses of black lines, and you're basically looking at those lines. This pattern is usable, but it's definitely not ideal. And for adjusting sharpness, it really is one of the most misunderstood controls. This is, is, what does sharpness actually do? You, you're basically adding information to the peak, peak levels of the signal. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you're basically also, if you turn it up too high, you're adding information that's not actually present in the video signal in terms of what you see. So the, the, really the overriding goal is, is to increase it as far as possible, but to the point where you don't introduce those unwanted artifacts. Basically ringing, you'll see two main artifacts, something called ringing and something called uh, uh, basically, 
I think rigging is the, the majority of it. Although, if there are other compression artifacts in a picture, if you're watching regular video with a lot of compression artifacts, increasing the sharpness too far will make those compression artifacts stand out even more. So what we're basically trying to do is, you know, you don't want to turn it down too far because you don't want to soften the picture. You do want to, you want all the detail you can get, but at the same point, take it too far and you're going to add stuff to the picture that shouldn't be there and it can honestly, it can take problems in the picture, like I was saying, compression artifacts and make them even more uh, noticeable. Sort of the inverse of digital noise reduction. It can, exactly. <laughs> so what are we looking at in the pattern here? So this is the resolution test pattern off of the AVS disk. And what we're going to look at, basically, this is, a, this is kind of a light gray background to this with the black lines on there. And essentially, with that pattern showing, we'll then go into the settings on the TV. Whoops. Picture controls. Is it ever called anything other than sharpness? I've never seen it called anything besides okay. sharpness. So for that. And then with the control active, I'm just going to crank it way up and down just to see what happens when you get out of spec. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn this way up. It and makes my eye hurts. It's a moray pattern. Make it stop. For some of these valve shaped right. uh, test patterns on here, if you can see along like the top edges and along the, the, the horizontal lines along the left side you're edges. You're seeing like a bright white ghost of the end of the black line. Exactly. You're yeah. adding essentially a white edge to a dark line and it to, hurts. Make the, <laughs> to make the dark line stand out more. And you, those white edges and everything in there isn't actually part of the video signal. That's stuff you've added by cranking this control too high. So back it down until those tiny little extensions oh. of non-white edges disappear. I'm still seeing white dots across the oh, top yeah. here and a little bit along there. So you take it all the way down to the bottom and you'll, you should sometimes see the picture just get there. fuzzy on you. That little, looks fuzzy. Yeah, so now I'm gonna turn it back up until we... Oh, stop. Back. 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 There. Maybe? Yeah. Maybe down That's one more notch? One more notch. So you are left with effectively what is the test pattern itself. Just the black huh. lines on that gray background without that white ringing, without that additional data that shouldn't be there. Again, you don't want to take it too low because you will make the picture get less sharp, and you, you want that extra detail. And if you're sitting far you enough want back, detail, but not too much false information. Exactly, because okay. uh, uh, some purist would say, "Oh, you just crank that control to zero and leave right. it there." That's not always the case. Uh, <laughs> you're going to find that certain TVs will actually degrade picture quality by taking it too far. Mm -hmm. The center point's sometimes a good place to start and just go back and forth from there. Uh, once it's set right, you shouldn't have to mess with it for different types of content. And the further back you sit, you might want to bump it up a little notch or two higher really? than you might have otherwise if you're sitting closer, like right on top of the pattern, trying to get it just right. Up. Not, you don't want it too high, but it, I find it's better to go slightly higher than it is slightly lower. But if you're seeing a, a black line that should be a black line on a gray background, there shouldn't be any additional information around that, and you want to keep it clean. So. Good to know. Mr. Heron's going to be well, following up on some questions we've got. There's a few questions you guys have been sending us in about the whole home DIY calibration series we've been doing. Do us a favor, send more to us, hdnation at revision3.com. We'll do our best to get them answered for you. Right now, I want to take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, GoDaddy.com, people. We're talking about reliable, secure web hosting with no long-term contract. You want to try out a website, see if you get some traffic, don't want to spend two years paying for it? GoDaddy's hosting is perfect for you, and their plans are bigger and better than ever. We're talking 99.9% .9 uptime, free 24-7 support, and hey, no annual commitment. Now remember, if you haven't checked it out, you can download GoDaddy's free iPhone, Android, or BlackBerry applications right onto your phone where you can use it to order stuff and manage your current domains quite a bit more. Check it out if you haven't. And uh, while you're checking things out, when you get to the checkout, when you purchase something, if you want a discount, use the code HDN8, you'll score 10% off any order. And if that's not quite sounding like a smoking enough deal for you, check out revision3.com slash GoDaddy. We got a list of all the amazing GoDaddy deals you can get from all the programs up at Revision 3. Check it out, people. And please support our sponsors by using their services like uh, GoDaddy websites, domains. Check it out, people. Hey, Vu writes in. Hello, Robert and Patrick, or Patrick and Robert, I should say. Patrick, congrats on your spiffy new AV receiver. Thank yeah, you. that is nice. I recently purchased an Onkyo TX SR608, and now I'm in the search for speaker, speakers. Particularly, I'm looking at the EMP Impression Series with their new E55Ti floor standing speakers. Mm. The Onkyo is spec to output 100 watts at 8 ohms for two channels. Mm -hmm. The speakers are recommended for amplifiers that produce 50 to 200 watts at 6 ohms. This sounds great since the receiver fits right in the middle, but should I be concerned that the receiver is only showing the power output for running two channels? 
Would there be a significant drop in power if I were to run a full 5.1 setup? Would this be a good speaker set, or should I scale down to something that's not as power hungry? Much thanks, signed Vu. Wow, nice looking speaker. Those are shiny. Yeah. The, the short answer to your question, Vu, is no, you, you won't feel that drop in power. And I'm not sure I'd call uh, 50 to 200 watts at six ohms particularly power hungry compared to some of the speakers I've seen over the years. I would avoid four ohm or two ohm rated speakers with that particular uh, receiver, but those EMPs, seriously, they should work just fine with your Ankyo receiver. For those that hear ohm and think mantra, the ohm rating for a speaker is a measure of impedance. That's the, the speaker's resistance to alternating current. The lower the ohm rating, the harder your amplifier has to work to drive a speaker. And if your amp isn't up to it, a four or two ohm speaker, <laughs> two ohm speakers can hurt things. They will draw enough power to kick your amp's ass if you turn it up to 11. Speakers, by the way, have the impedance. Amps are rated as to what kind of impedance, well, they're rated for, they're qualified for, that won't kill them. You can wire up a 4-ohm speaker to an amp rated for 8-ohms. If you turn it up all the way, it'll probably overheat, your amp that is, and if you're really lucky, something will fry, pop, and release the magic smoke from inside the amp, and you have to go off to the store and buy a new amp or receiver. What's that smell? Yes, yes, that's the magic smoke <laughs> that made your receiver work. And yes, before people start emailing, your amp does send alternating current to your speakers. I'm going to oversimplify a bit here, Vu, but your AV receiver, any AV receiver, essentially packs multiple power amps inside it, one for every channel it supports. That TXSR608 you bought supports 100 watts at 8 ohms with 0 .08 total harmonic distortion, and it's continuous 6 ohm rated, that's good, but the THD, the distortion, jumps to 0.1% of that. That stage once you get the six ohm speakers wired in there. I doubt you're going to hear that, but it's more car stereo harmonic distortion level than serious auto nerd, and we could argue about this for hours, and I'm not going to. Seriously, those speakers should be fine with that amp. By the way, you don't have to worry about the subwoofer if you buy the model EMP specs for that set of speakers since it's self powered. If you buy something like a Shoe Research subwoofer, the Kaboom. So nice, <laughs> and, and they're on sale right now for back to school. You are going to need an external amp for it, which Shu happily enough sells, since your amplifier that Ankyo doesn't actually have a channel to drive a sub, which is not unusual. It's, it's actually getting harder and harder to find an amplifier with a channel dedicated to a sub, especially as you get into the more quality receivers, AV receivers, because they kind of think you're going to need a 500 watt megalith of an amplifier to power your massive subwoofer. That, that's what it is, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't the power requirements for a subwoofer generally way? out of line from the rest of the speakers in the group? For all intents and purposes. Yeah. Well, we will again oversimplify and basically say, generally speaking, your sub, it's either going to have an amp built in or it's going to have a big fat amp that kind of squats onto it or next to it or near it. But yeah, dude, the Onkyo, it'll take care of you. Excellent. Excellent. But yeah, uh -huh. Max, make sure your speakers and your amplifier, the ohm rating on your speakers is within the rating by your speaker. Your, it's not your speaker, duh, your amplifier manufacturer. It'll, it'll help. Nice. Ben in Virginia asks, there it is, Robert, white balance, educate us. I can adjust RGB settings individually for the light and dark areas of my picture. Is there really a way to reliably adjust this setting without expensive monitoring equipment or metering equipment? I'm enjoying the calibration advice. Thanks, Ben. Oh boy, I don't think adjusting white balance by adjusting RGB is a good idea. Wrong-headed of me? No, I mean, that's how you do it. There is actually red, blue. But I blue. thought I just went to the, actually thinking of We were doing basic front controls. Oh. We didn't even, we didn't, what, what calibrators really get paid for is making sure the white balance is right where it needs to be. We we're talking about color temperature. Right. There's a specific color of gray that we're shooting for for the <laughs> entire grayscale, from, from black to peak white. Those should all be the same color. Which brings us back to D65 is not 6500 Kelvin. No. Oh, boy. No, 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 no. But, okay, just know that there is a specific gray right. color, not too blue, not too red, kind of in the middle. And in order to really nail that on a TV, it, you can't use your eyes. I, you can use an optical, what they call an optical comparator, which mm -hmm. is essentially like a gray card, and just kind of hold it out there. Otherwise, you know, that that is very basic. Right. And and usually it's gonna be one shade of gray versus maybe the midpoint shade of gray on the TV. It doesn't color the high or the low end. Mm -hmm. And when you do a white balance adjustment on a TV, typically you're given two points to correct. Something in the darker grays and something in the lighter grays. And then hopefully the electronics inside will, will line that out so that everything in between will be at that same level if that's what you're hoping. Some TVs <laughs> offer 10 or 20 presets from black to white that you right. select each one, you go through and measure that color of gray to make sure it's right on spec. That's a lot of work, but 
Can you do it without a hardware tool? No. I, I have never seen anybody do it by eyeballs nowadays. It's right. just it's 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 just you're guessing, and you really don't want to do that if somebody's paying you good money to do it. Uh, the next best thing, or if you're honestly, paying somebody or, if you're paying somebody good money to calibrate your television and they whip out a little card and hold it up there. Yeah, upset, right? I mean, you want to do check. Right. Content you're familiar with. I mean, look at skin tones and colors of nature, natural scenes you're familiar with after you're all done with everything to make sure it all looks right. right. But a gray card ain't going to cut it. You really want something called like a colorimeter or a spectroradiometer. That's the little just thing that squats over your screen. Either a puck or that. a high end camera device mm -hmm. that measures that stuff accurately so you get it right. Otherwise, stick with your color temperature presets. I mean, that's about the only time I'm eyeballing it's just to see, okay. High color temperature presets, too blue. Uh, low three is too red. I want something kind of more midpoint. Just right. Yeah, like Goldilocks. It, it's really tough to do without range. without tools. Yeah. Tools. So I dude, love the color gray. I'm I'm feeling a thumbs down on the optical comparators. No, no, no. I wouldn't. I mean, okay. just if, use the preset for the color. I think for maybe the, getting the color temperature from the presets right. It's like, oh yeah, that's about where it should be, right. given your because that's also affected by room lighting and things mm -hmm. like that. That's where hardware is nice to have. <laughs> I think that answers your question. Hey, you ever see a video on YouTube and wonder, how do they do that? Well, wonder no more and get your learning on with Revision 3's newest show, Joe Genius. It's taking the curtain off. It's going inside the black box. It's basically letting you inside the mystery behind the best science videos online and showing you why they work or more often why they didn't. Join host Jonah Ray for new episodes of Joe Genius. It's coming every Thursday at revision3.com slash Joe Genius. Check it out, people. It's fun stuff, and it's all about the learning. Now I want to calibrate TVs. <laughs> no, only Good, adjust, come to my house. Adjust white balance. Come to my house. Proper. We have I have, two, a, I have a television you can calibrate at we, my house. We have two brand new TVs waiting to be unboxed. Fine. Yeah. Yeah, we got we got big stuff coming up next week. Drobo FS. We oh. got some new internet-enabled TVs coming up. Right now, though. Hey, it's time to go. We hope you guys enjoyed this episode of HD Nation. As always, we want to know what you think. So please send your comments, questions, or suggestions to hdnation at revision3.com. You can always find us on YouTube in case you're ever up on the YouTubes, youtube.com slash tech, T-E-K-H-D, and you can find links regarding pretty much everything we talk about in the show in the show notes on the page of the show at hdnation.tv. Just go to the individual episode. we got links galore, stuff. We make there. it easy. Mm -hmm. Plus, you'll find all the links to subscribe to the show, so please subscribe and watch. Mm -hmm. Tell your friends, and until next time. Thanks for watching. I'm Patrick Norton. And I'm Robert Heron. We'll see you next week. Thank you.